we could see something. And these lights started showing up. Something started growling. Uh, my name's Don Overton, and uh, I was a, I'm a member of the Missouri Ghost Hunter Society. Uh, we've been around for a very long time since, oh, many years ago. But I joined them after they were already established, or they asked me to join them, and I did. I had another group years ago. Uh, the his name was Guy, and uh, we we had a group for a while. It was a Midwest uh, uh, Mocan Paranormal. I think I think that was the name of it. But anyway, uh, he moved away and disbanded. And this other group just asked me because I investigated their property and found some things. I didn't want them to tell me anything about it, so I found some things there that they uh, they knew I was for real, you know, looking for answers. Anyway, I joined them years ago, and well, we did a lot of paranormal investigations, uh, family hotel and Crescent Hotel, and I even did one overseas and a couple of places in New Zealand, and we did uh, uh, just different, you know, people would call us. Our main goal was to help people uh, that had problems with uh, either spirits or or they're just having problems in their house. Or we'd go in and debunk, you know, for something else going on besides spirits. Uh, anyway, uh, it, it started out as that. And... Uh, back up, well, go forward from way back then to uh, about 10 years ago, uh, my uh, group members, uh, Brian and Linda, uh, their, one of their sons was out deer hunting in a conservation area. It's about 30 miles as a crow flies from where I'm, my property is here right now. Uh, but it was out in the middle of nowhere. They he hiked in there. He was bow hunting and hiked in real early in the morning. And it was a December, uh, first part of December. And uh, he was sitting there on a, uh, it was a real grassy area, real tall grass, but it was on a little hill. And uh, there was sections of woods, you know, on the way they had it set up. There was different sections of woods, you know, around him. But they had, he had a pathway where he could see everything. You know, because they walked in there about three to four miles, him and his brother. But his brother was about a few hundred yards away from him. But he was sitting on this little brim thing and grass was there. And then a fog bank rolled in. It was about four o'clock in the morning. And as the fog rolled in, in front of uh, my friend's son there, uh, the fog was like a, in a strip where he could see over the fog and under it, but uh, nothing, you know, really could see him because he was in that grass, the tall grass sitting down. And he said this Bigfoot, he said it was probably, he was just guessing, eight foot tall. He said it was huge and it come out of nowhere, he said. And it, it uh, was standing like uh, to his side. And he was nervous with that bow. He didn't know what to do. He just sat there. And he said that that uh, Bigfoot turned its whole body and looked towards where he was. And he said that uh, he thought it saw him. And he it, it didn't. And he said it turned the other way. And when it walked away, it uh, it like it glided along. He said it it was the weirdest thing because it went so far, so fast just by walking it went like uh he said probably a hundred yards or so before it actually disappeared into another section of woods so he got up and he he started yelling for his you know brother and they they got together and then they uh they got out of there and they told uh brian is our uh, he's our founder of the missouri ghost hunter society told him about it, and uh, so he asked me if we wanted to go out there and check it out. And I said, sure, let's see what that's all about. So 
we uh, hiked in with our what a, a big old bag of equipment, which I'm kind of glad we brought it. But anyway, we hiked in there, Brian and I and uh, his wife, Linda. So we hiked in there and uh, uh, hiked in all the way back to the back of it. And as we were hiking in, we saw these, when we got close to where the place was, no, his uh, son came with us to show us exactly where the location was. So he was with us and he was with us. And there are these bones, piles of bones that we were running into as we were going in there and they were piled up. They were, they weren't big. Uh, they were deer bones is what they were. And small deer and they were just piled up and cleaned and everything but it, it just weird these piles were showing up and we thought that was really strange and I think yeah we videotaped some of those as we were leaving uh, but anyway we got there he showed us what happened and where the Bigfoot you know was and we heard a scream <laughs> of it had to be what it was, you know, but we didn't have any equipment set up or anything. We thought, oh, boy, here. And it was getting it's so far in there. We, we should have left earlier, but it was getting closer to evening. And we thought, well, let's just stick around and see what happens. But when we stuck around, we started setting up these. Uh, oh. At that time, I had one thermal camera. And uh, oh, some uh, pretty mili almost military grade night vision, real close. Anyway, we set this stuff up, and we could hear something moving around us, but we couldn't see it. That's what was weird about this one too, is that we could hear it in the brush right behind us. You know, because we were so far back in there that. We didn't know. Uh, surely, you know, uh, we could see something, you know, that was there. We didn't know what it was. And these lights started showing up. First, they showed up in the sky, these strange orbs of light. Oh, at first, no, we, at first we seen flashes of light with our own eyes. We thought, what is that? They were, they would like, uh, it wasn't bugs or anything because it was, it was pretty cold. It was December. First part of this is December 4th, as a matter of fact. Uh, anyway, there weren't bugs, it's flashes, and then these orbs. I got the night vision out, and these orbs started showing up. We could see those too, but they were in the trees, they were in the sky, and then we seen some bigger ones about, I would say, oh, some of them were pretty big, some of them big as basketballs. And they were white, like a white maybe a blue tint on the bigger ones, but they were just everywhere. And uh, so we filmed these lights for oh, a good 45 minutes, um, but we weren't really prepared to, <laughs> to stay there because it was so cold. It was getting cold. Uh, we thought we were just going to go in there and check it out, you know, and get on just – look for prints or whatnot and then get on out of there. But, you know, after all that stuff happened, we st yeah. stuck around for quite a while. And uh, anyway, we hiked on out after that because we got getting so cold that the lights were still happening. And when we left, you could see the lights, you know, too. And we thought that was the weirdest thing. Uh, so we couldn't figure out what it was, the light thing. So uh, I contacted MUFON. I thought, well, maybe they can help us out and contacted them. And they come down and looked at the video and, and uh, they wanted a copy. <laughs> I wouldn't give them a copy of it. I just, I don't know. We just have a thing about that. But uh, anyway, um, they looked at it and, we gave them a picture copy, and I think we did a, yeah, we did a radio, I think it was, her name was uh, Margie Kay. I think 
Yeah, I think that and she had a podcast. She wanted us to do that. So we did a podcast with her about the lights and strange lights and whatnot. But well, let's go back and, uh, and get some more information on those on those lights. Yeah. Now, okay, so if I got this right, um mm-hmm. the young man was hunting, he had this Bigfoot encounter. Did he describe yeah. what that Bigfoot looked like specifically? He said it was a kind of it was between dark brown and light brown, it was just, you know, it had lo- longer hair. And it said that he was, uh, it, it didn't look like a gorilla or anything. It looked like a, you know, like, like a person, you know, but it was he, like a, if I remember, that's what hits what, uh, it's been 10 years or over 10 years, but it was uh, a really large. But when he turned, he, he said it didn't have any neck. He said that was strange. It just like, you know, shoulder and head, and it turned towards him. And uh, and then when it turned away, it didn't look his way very long, but it was like dark, between dark and light brown, I believe is what he said. So, uh, Did he ever go back up there and hunt again? Did he ever go back up there and hunt anymore? Yes, but he didn't go... I don't know if he went for a while, but they they stuck together after that. And they have heard, they've been out there before and heard like something, <laughs> something killing something. And then you could hear, they could hear it dragging it. Like uh, they're, they were, I think they were in a stand when they heard that. That's a year or two later. So whatever's out there. Oh, and we went back out there too. Uh, just Brian and Linda and I. Uh, of course, we have other uh, we have other group, group members, uh, Greg and Glendy and Derek, sir, that is their name. But they can't they couldn't make any of the, uh, those investigations. But we went back out there, Brian Lennon and I, and a couple of different times. It's a long hike to get back in there. Um, but the the second time we went out there, the lights showed up again, again, and. Uh, they weren't as uh, prevalent as the they were the first time, but they were they were there. I mean, the light. Oh, and we heard the scream again, but it was with some coyotes. That's the weirdest thing. We, I didn't have a, uh, my camera hooked up and my audio going. I, what I made was this back before the GoPro thing, but I had made a hat with a camera and then I had a DVR hooked with wires, you know. Uh, little DVR and I didn't have it hooked up yet and this uh, this scream real loud scream it was it was real close to me and Brian and Linda were were down uh, probably oh I don't know they were a good 100 yards away from me uh, I was down closer to the site where uh, Brian's son had that sighting you know the time before but it screamed and then coyotes right in like right with it after that, but it, it was definitely not a coyote. I mean, it was so loud. And Brian, Brian and Linda were yelling at me as they come running down there. I said, did you get that on audio? I said, no, I didn't have it on. Uh, but I wish I had. Anyway. Do you know of anyone else who's been there who have seen those lights? Yes. The 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 son that uh, seen the Bigfoot, he has seen those lights out there. I, I, he's seen them when they were hunting, but not, he said they were, some of them were like the size of basketballs that they were seeing just going through the woods, you know, uh, but they have seen them. Yes. There wasn't and as this, many and, of them as, as what we saw. Was this oh, in yes. Missouri? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, is this, and I, and I don't want you to give me where, where of course, but was, is this in the Southern part of Missouri or the Northern part? Southern here. Well, kind of South, west yeah southwest part okay yeah, um, uh, is it is it anywhere near the spook light around joplin no now i've investigated the spook light before and uh, we were on the travel channel with that one uh, well tell me tell me about that investigation oh okay well um gosh that's been over 10 years ago too uh well, Brian and I and Linda, again, we invited Greg and Glendy and Derek. They couldn't make it, but we were going to go out and find the exact spot. There's one certain spot you go to 
on the, if you get the right directions. Um, now it's hard to get in there because they patrol it all the time, the highway patrol. But anyway, uh, of course, the road was paved. And, you know, when we got there, there's a tower now. I was there years ago and saw it. And Brian had too, you know, when they had the dirt, when it was all dirt road and all that. But anyway, there's a tower there now that blinks. But past the tower, uh, this light will show up. And uh, it it splits sometimes. It splits in two or it splits in many lights or it just stays as one light and it gets really, really bright. And we went out there and it was a moonlit night. When we went, it was a full moon, and uh, we got on the right, we found the right spot finally, because it's hard to, I mean, you got to get an exact location or you won't see it, but what's weird about it is if you drive down it, you know, down the road, if you get it in sight and you go past it, it disappears, and it's not car lights because you go past, you know, the, the point, and there's no car lights whatsoever. Of course, we was there late at night, too. It was probably... I don't know, 12 or, you know, one o'clock. This is the first time when we went and investigated on our own. So we uh, got in the right spot and I had this real powerful night vision and started recording this. Of course, you got to watch for traffic too. In the location where we were at, there were uh, these real fast hills. And if you weren't paying attention to the vehicles coming across there, you might get run over so we, i had to stand in the middle of the road and film this thing and listen for anybody coming I about got got it one time a big a truck come blazing through there but anyway i filmed the what we could and got some really good video of it it was uh it was splitting in two it was doing weird things and uh, the light you know did what everybody says it just shows up all of a sudden and then it just uh, uh, glows and then gets smaller and then bigger, but it's a bright. Uh, I was looking at it through night vision, but if you looked at it with your eyes, it had different colors in it too. If you just, you know, saw it with your eyes, uh, like red and blue and, you know, green, all kinds of weird colors. So we filmed that and that Brian posted it on his, uh, I think you can find it on YouTube. It says the, uh, well, Brian put the best video of the ghost, uh, the Hornet ghost light, I think. Yeah, how did that light compare with the one that you saw out at the hunting site? Well, that, that ghost, uh, the spook light in Joplin was much bigger. Of course, it was further away, you know. Uh, I will say we, we when we were investigating that that night, too, uh, trying to find the right location, a light did peer above us. I seen it. Brian seen the aftermath of it, but it was like a triangle shape up close, like a well, no, more like a diamond, a full diamond. You know, well, anyway, it was shaped, had a triangle, but it was, you know, it was just there, and then it just shrunk down to nothing and went away. Which I thought was and, weird. And this was at this was at the Joplin Spook Light. Yes, and that's and we I, evidently we were real close where it originally. I don't know, but anyway, we couldn't film anything like that unless you had the camera. I wish I would have had a camera, you know, uh, to catch it that fast. But that was. Well, was you can describe cool. it to me, even though you didn't get a video of it. You can yeah, you know, just describe it to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was bright, bright white. Uh, it had some blue in it, uh, but it just it. It was there, all of a sudden appeared there, and then just shrunk down to nothing. It just went away. And Brian did catch the the end of it, but I caught the whole thing looking at it. I thought that was a weird, <laughs> weird thing. So we had we backed up down the road. That's when we filmed it, and then he posted on the you know website, and then the Travel Channel contacted us and wanted us to do uh, I think it was called uh, well, it's hard uh, Legend of the Ozarks. It had the the spook light and uh, Wilson's Creek, which is another story, <laughs> which I could go, I could tell you ghost stories all day, but uh, it, uh, but anyway, they contacted us and they closed off the highway 
you know, the highway, they had the highway patrol, closed it off a section and we uh, filmed it. But I told them what I wanted to do was, is uh, if we do it, I was going to bring a high powered laser and uh, I was going to shoot this <laughs> laser beam at this thing and uh, see what it did, you know. And uh, I don't know. The, the producer said, yeah, let's, let's go for it. So anyway, we they they didn't think it'd show up. I said, well, it's going to be show. And, oh, it showed up in the daytime. It actually it shot a beam of light up from uh, the ground up. You can see like in the daytime, we've seen this. And we, we thought they surely videotaped this. I think they did. They just didn't put that. The light shot up in the daytime. You could actually see this thing in it you know, forming. And uh, I don't know why they didn't put that in there. But anyway, they didn't think it was going to show up. It was probably 10 o'clock. And I said, well, any time now, about five minutes later, you know, there it was. And we were used to it. And they were all excited. And, and uh, of course, they were trying to get some of us to act. You know, I told the producer, I'm a, I'm a paranormal investigator. I'm not an actor. So, but anyway, I had to try to act excited about it. And I, I'm just used to it, you know. And I said, there it is. It's going to stay out a while. They thought it was going to go. I said, no, it'll be there quite a while. And I said, well, how do you know? I said, well, we've done it before. And anyway, we filmed it for them. And uh, um, they took care of that. And then. They uh, put it on there, and it was it was a good experience. I'm glad they experienced it. I just wish they would have trusted us more that we knew what we were doing. But sounds anyway, like it was. Yeah. Sounds like it. It sounds like it was a good experience. Uh, about two months later, these lights started showing up here at, at my property, which I told Brian and Linda, and you know they come out and they we were watching these lights. They were showed up here too. So uh, we were videotaping them one night in the summer of 2014. It was a June, June 2018. Anyway, we were filming these lights. Something started growling very loud above Linda and I. Of course, Brian was standing over. We were in the driveway of right here on my property, in the driveway, watching these lights, sitting in lawn chairs. Anyway, Brian was sitting there away from us, and another thing was screaming, like a, a smaller one, across the fence. We have a pond out in front of the house. It was across the fence in the field. So Brian, he takes off running towards the uh, the littler one. He ran, Brian ran about 50 yards towards it to the fence line and seen it on two legs. It was about, he said about five feet tall. Um, and it was on two legs running away. And he said that uh, he couldn't see any others, but while he was over there, this thing was growling, something huge was growling and I could not film it. I had my equipment in my lap and Linda, Brian's wife, she got up and ran when this thing was growling over us. She ran a little ways away because it was pretty frightening. Anyway, I thought, well, it was going to get us. It was going to get us, but I could not film it. That's what I couldn't figure out. We could not film it or get it on audio. Uh, I was later told that uh, they could carry their voices, but I don't know about that. Anyway, uh, to make a long story short on that one, uh, couldn't see it on video, couldn't get it on audio either. Now, they've got the little one on audio screaming. We did get that, making weird sounds, but the big one, nothing. And uh, we tried to figure that out. And the only thing I could come up with is this, you know, uh, over the years thinking about it, is it has to do with our reality and their reality. Maybe it has to do with... Uh, uh, Frequency and vibration or something like that with quantum physics is somehow that they can maybe they can go in and out of our reality. And, you know, of course, we're stuck in what we our reality right now with our, you know, frequency. Anyway, that happened. And then we 
later on we kept investigating it after that and we got it on thermal running across the oh about 100 yards away down a uh, uh it's a telephone line down through the the pasture behind us here and uh, it was 100 yards away and i had a bigfoot guy you had him on here before a bigfoot uh, researcher and he come out and looked at the video and he said yeah it looks like about a seven foot one running across there um but i just wanted to get it closer so you know closer video of it uh, so about two months ago uh, i did see one a smaller one over here underneath the solar panels as i was walking my dog out uh, to use the restroom and underneath the solar panels on the other uh, neighbor's property he, he was standing by a uh, i'm guessing because i only saw the back and of him as he was running away, but I did see the back of his, you know, shoulders and he was running away on two legs, but he's pretty short, but I did get a casting of it. Uh, I have the cast down here and I have a bigger cast that we got later of a big one. I got a cast of the smaller one's print over there. Um, anyway, oh, when I seen this thing, I had the dog, of course the dog heard it as it was running, I mean, it ran quick through the brush and it was behind, like I said, it was standing to the side. It must have look, been looking at me behind the cedar tree that was standing by. And as I was turning, it was turning, I guess, I'm guessing. But the dog did not see it. I mean, that's what's weird. The dog heard it and it was trying to, I have this big dog and it couldn't, the way the angle was of the solar panels, it couldn't see, you know, from where it was, the dog was down below anyway. I could, I think that's what the thing thought that I couldn't see it, but it saw me turning and it oh and it took off. But I did get that footprint. And then I, what's weird is I ran back in. I got my wife was sitting out on the patio and I told her what was ha what happened. I was trying to hand her the dog, and the, which I just wound up taking the dog in and I grabbed the camera as fast as I could, and I ran back out there and just tried to film anywhere you know I could see it, but all these. That's going to sound strange, but all these birds started sounding off. Like, what's weird is I couldn't get them on video, but I, you know, the audio, you could, or I could hear them, and I picked up on just hundreds of birds everywhere, uh, which is weird. <laughs> you know, I don't know what that meant, but uh, I don't know if that has to, something to do with that or something. I don't know. It was a strange deal. But anyway, couldn't film them. But I did get it on audio there. Uh, went back to the house and just thought about it. And I thought, you know, we've got the bigger footprint, which we got earlier. Um, excuse me. And I did get a picture of a footprint that even in the wintertime in the same spot, you know, the bigger one that went through. And I actually had... Uh, you know, where I could, I filmed it, the print of that one, and the snow was smaller than this bigger footprint I've got down here, which is pretty big. But it, you could clearly see the toes and everything. And I thought, who would be out here barefoot? But it was in almost the same spot that I got this other print. But I have security cameras on my house. And what's weird is it, it showed up in the spot where, it, it's not in, in view of the, you know, cameras, which I think is really strange. You know, I don't understand that, but um, I don't know. I don't know uh, what the, you know, caused that. But, um, and I tried feeding them, <laughs> which they call it, what they call it, gifting, like a gifting. See, I'm not a Bigfoot researcher. I'm just trying to figure this out, what's going on here. Uh, uh, but I'm not, uh, you know, uh, well, I guess I, in my own way, I'm researching it. Uh, but uh, anyway, I've been feeding them for a while. And I even set up, what's weird about that, I set up trail cams uh, away from the house. And I had, I'd set up an apple or, you know, some type of fruit, mainly apples. But I put them on this tree about, only about, uh, oh, 
15 to 20 feet away from this trail, these trail cams. And what would happen is, is that Apple would disappear, uh, but nothing would be on the video. Like, it, uh, you know, it, it'd take a video, but the Apple would be gone. I'm thinking, how in the world is that possible? Then one time I did get some, what's weird about this one is, there was some fur that showed up on one side, but you can't, I can't make out what it was. I mean, you can, I saved it, but you can't make out what the fur is, but it showed the fur and then it gets away and it, it kind of moves the camera, but it readjusts the camera, straightens the camera up, <laughs> but the apple's gone and it's probably good. I thought, well, that, if that's the case, it had to be maybe two of them, one taking the apple while the other one was messing with the camera. I don't know, but that was kind of a strange deal. <laughs> Uh, on that so I thought well it's, I'm not catching them that way so what I did was I probably shouldn't have but I I started putting apples out on a table about 50 feet from my, my patio I thought I'm gonna you know I'm gonna get this thing on somehow and uh, anyway I'd get this apples out there and I thought well I'll put it out there with a trail cam and Nothing would bother the apples. So I tried and tried. You know, I'd put different stuff out there. And, and uh, the apple uh, stayed there. So I took the trail cam out. The apple would disappear. Anyway, so I tried something else. I put a, uh, this is a strange one. I put a jar of peanuts, small jar of peanuts out there and loosened the lid. I thought, well, I'll set that out there. But it was a nice jar. I shouldn't have used one of my wife's better jars, but anyway, I set that out there on the table and it sat there for oh, quite a while. And all of a sudden, um, one day, what was it? It was in the fall. That was last year, fall. It, uh, the peanut jar uh, disappeared, which I thought, oh man. It, something took my jar, and that, you know, I couldn't figure that out. And I thought, well, I said, you guys took my jar. I just mentioned it, you know. I thought, surely. And I said, I wish they'd bring my jar back. And sure enough, about oh, it was four or five hours later, the jar was sitting on a, a railroad tie. Uh, this was in the daytime, too. I'm sitting on the railroad tie with the lid sitting right beside it. And I thought, and I filmed this. I, well, I went out there when the jar was gone. I thought, I'll film it and find it and see where it was at. And I filmed all around, and nothing was there. And then it shows up on this railroad tie that I filmed previously. And I can't figure out how in the world can something put something there without me seeing it. Of course, I'm in the, in the house, you know, for a few hours. I had to do it. I had to, whatever did it, I had to, you know, take it and, and then bring it back while I'm in the house. But there's no one that knew where this jar was except for me, uh, which I think is, I don't know, that's a pretty strange story there. Um, so we keep trying to find this thing. And, uh, well, more than one. Uh, we think there's probably a family of five. I think that's what the big uh, foot researcher, uh, you've interviewed him here on your show your deal before but he said he thinks there's a family of five too and and we couldn't get any more video of it so what we did was is we about two months ago we set up what was it it was about two months ago yeah set up in the driveway again like we did the time before when we had that first experience of something growling over the top of linda and i and brian running after the little one so we set it up exact, exactly like that well it started happening again. The lights, this was only a couple months ago, that a light would show up in the sky, two, two different ones. And they were no sound on these things. I don't know what they were. But I this time, I didn't bring my uh, high-powered uh, uh, infrared. I Instead, I've been using thermal because I thought the infrared was bothering the Bigfoot where I couldn't film. So I was trying to film these things you know, going in the sky with the thermal camera. And the minute I get the thermal camera up there, the wind just said, oh, it zipped away, it moved away on one of them. And the other one did the same thing. So these lights show up, and then we hear something crashing in the woods. 
And we had thermal cameras set up underneath the solar panels, kind of hidden where the solar panels were, uh, where we could actually get audio or video or something. And you could hear it crashing and hear rock clacking. That's what we could, you could hear these rock, like, but that's the only way, just rocks pounding together. Or, that's the only way to explain it. Anyway, uh, we did get something on thermal, uh, but you can't, I mean, it's like behind a tree, you can see some legs moving, but the thing is, what is it? You know, uh, you, I mean, the thermal, you can't really tell for sure 100% unless you get the full, you know, body of it, I think. So, but I did save that video. And we did get, uh, oh, it was making some weird uh, noises, breathing. We picked that up on audio and we could hear it clear back in the driveway. But it wasn't loud like it was the time before over the top of us, but you could actually hear it. So you could hear it crashing through there, got the thermal of it. Uh, but, uh, oh, EVPs showed up on uh, uh, one of our audios, electronic voice phenomena. We showed up on our audio of one of our thermal cameras, and we had one facing us about 50 feet away. Of course, they couldn't pick up anything clearly what we were saying, you know, but it did pick up. And what's weird about that is this, uh, it's like metallic. I don't know what it was. It's like a, there was interference on the, the microphone of, but you could hear this thing and whatever this thing is that, well, whatever, if it's a spirit, I don't know. Uh, but it uh, said, there's Don, which is my name. It says clearly there's Don, and, uh, like a deep voice. Of course, I'm standing up, you know, the thermal camera showed me standing up. And then when we were running over there towards the, the noises that we heard, Brian and I went over there to check those out that the, Kind of got the thermal of we don't know for sure but uh but anyway as we was walking over it says they're gonna go gets it and i thought who talks like that <laughs> that just sounds weird they're gonna go gets it and i thought oh okay but uh yeah evps come through there and it was like a it's hard to explain the interference like a Metal running, rubbing, I don't metal rubbing together. It just kind of garbled metal something sounding. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, that was that. And uh, so I'm just trying. Oh, we had EVPs before one other time over there on audio, uh, which we have found out that the locations you go to, um, um, a lot of them, if they have a name, like we went to one in close to Nevada, which is Bridge. It's called uh, close to Nevada, Missouri. It's that's what they call it. But we went out there to investigate it. Somebody wanted us to do it, so we did it. And something was throwing stuff at us while we were on the bridge. We couldn't figure out what it was. And of course, I had this ghost box device, and I asked it what it you know what's there, and it it clearly you could hear it say Bigfoot. Like Bigfoot, I don't know if he believes it, that sort of thing, but it did say that. And we did get something moving across the road towards us. We thought we didn't, at that time, we didn't think anything. We thought, well, it's probably just saying Bigfoot. Well, now we don't, I don't know, but we couldn't film this thing across the, the way of the, in the woods beside the bridge. We tried filming it. You could hear it crashing in the, the trees nothing on video this is the nighttime of course but we had really very good night vision uh but it was throwing like little sticks and rocks at us and uh, it's just a weird deal and then that night at the witch's bridge Belinda and i got really really sick uh, and we had to leave we thought that was weird that both of us got sick at the same time we didn't know if that had anything to do with that, but we had to leave that. One. But we, we figured out that we ran into these things more than once uh, over the years when investigating graveyards. You, a lot of times you'll find them around graveyards too, because we had, we've had sticks thrown at us, 
you know, from the wooded areas and the remote gra gra grave yards that we investigated for people, which is strange, you know, it, uh, that doesn't make any sense that that's happening, but, um, but that's kind of what we found uh, over the years. So I don't well, know. A lot. You, you you found a lot over the years. Well, I'm just yeah, I'm just trying to help people that if they have, if they have like this place, this property here, uh, I researched it too, and I thought, well, there's something. There's has to be something. I did find one thing that a, a neighbor. See, oh, that's another thing. I asked neighbors around here. I mean, I'm not. I don't care what they think. If they've seen anything, I you know I won't go as far. I said, have you seen anything unusual? One neighbor. Uh, I mean, neighbors aren't real close to me. I mean, I'm 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 way down the driveway. I'm like 900 feet. I'm the furthest one back in, and there are some neighbors way you know way off because we're in a, each one of us owns property or whatever. You know, pretty good chunks of it. But anyway, they said they seen one getting. They heard the other neighbor seen one getting in something get black, big and black, getting in a trash can leaning over and the one i seen over here by the uh, solar panels was about you know like i said about five foot at the tallest but it was dark brown i can only see it's dark brown almost black but it was you know over there and he said something was getting in their uh, uh trash can one of those big bins he said it was leaning in there he said he didn't know if it was a bear or a a big cat. I thought, well, man, that'd be a big cat. But he said he took a shot at it to scare it off. And he said it, <laughs> it ran off. Is what the neighbor, this neighbor was telling the story of another neighbor, of course. And then he said that there was something running around here that's a big black cat. I said, a humongous black cat. And I thought, I said, are you sure it's a cat? No, <laughs> not sure it's a cat. I thought, well, I don't think we have a panthers around here of course it could be but there's no panthers that run on two legs that i know but um which i don't know the neighbors have got stuff going on and also one more thing voices we've heard now my renter he told me about that as well um that he has heard voices outside he lives right across this the uh, Oh, probably about 200 yards. No, maybe a little further. But he lives back in the woods there, and he rents the property, uh, some of my property for his cattle. And he hears voices out there sometimes. You can hear him talking, but you can't understand them. And he said he one time he went out, he grabbed his pistol and went out there, and he didn't know what was going on, so he kept trying to follow these voices. And the further he went, the voices would get further away. And finally, he just gave up. He just, but I haven't heard that. In fact, I've heard that more than once. I have a, another pond across from me here, and I've heard voices, and I got, I have a parabolic dish. I thought, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that out and try to catch it, you know, see what they're saying. It's like two people talking is what it is. And I, it, it, what's weird is you cannot make out what it is. And I took that parabolic dish out there, and the minute, I mean, or the second I turned that thing on, nothing. I mean, there was, it's like they were, whoever, they could see me, but they would have a very difficult time because it's a few, you know, it's way over 100 yards away, way over that, probably 200, more like it. Uh, but anyway, uh, I don't know. And then I tried to sneak out there and get it. That didn't work. So I don't know what the what the voices are or the talking. You can't you can't make out what they're saying though. It's what's weird. Uh, so I don't know. And also hauntings follow Bigfoot, I think, because paranormal activity started happening in my house not long after we come back from that investigation at the conservation area with uh, Brian and his uh, um, wife and. But actually, my wife would hear footsteps in late at night. Uh, she said it's like somebody walking in an attic. And I said, well, we don't have an attic. We have, you know, an upstairs, but no attic was the way our house is set up. And I did hear it finally. It's like somebody heavy walking on, 
I could hear her walking down the hall. I thought, well, that was just weird. And then another paranormal activity happened, uh, you know, because of this big, I th- it started happening right after the Bigfoot sighting stuff. And uh, seen a, uh, um, had an SLS camera. Do you, are you familiar with that? No, I that don't is? know. It's a SLS camera is like a, I don't know if you've ever watched any of those ghost shows, but uh, it shows like a, a stick figure. It's like using a, uh, um, well, what it is, it's the, you know, that game that they have, the 3D game. Anyway, I made one, so, but it shows a stick figure with something in there. Like if it, you filmed a person, it shows a stick figure of you, like a stick, you know, outline instead of the person. But anyway, I filmed something coming through the window with this device. It's like a 3D scanner thing is basically what it is. Xbox game, you know, and you have to hook it up to the sensor and all that. But anyway, something's coming through the window of our upstairs and you can see it dancing around like it knows what it's doing. It's dancing around and it goes back out the window again. And then we got it interacting with me later, you know, which is weird. Uh, but yeah, there's paranormal activity. Oh, the, the craziest one is one coming from mowing one one time. And this was after the Bigfoot encounter, too. It was uh, coming in the house and the TV goes off, which I thought, well, electricity went off. Well, I looked around, the electricity was still on, but the TV went off. I was there by myself. And then all of a sudden, the stereo goes on upstairs, full blast. I wish I remember what song it was playing, but it was a CD player, and you had to push the as a five CD changer. You had to push it in to make it go, and it it went off. And I thought, what? So I went up, and it, oh, the glass door was open, which I always shut. So I turned that off, and as I was walking downstairs, the washing machine comes on. As I was walking by you know, where we have our laundry area room thing, it goes on. And so I, I, I reached over and turned the washing machine off and I said, that's it. And no more of that. <laughs> Quit doing that. And it stopped, you know, uh, doing that stuff. I thought, how, what would have the power to do that? You know, to, I mean, uh, that's a weird thing. Uh, but anyway, my wife seems to think it was probably a uh, didn't have anything to do with you know the the Bigfoot stuff, but she thinks it's probably something I brought home from an investigation. I said no, we hadn't been on any for quite a while at that time. I said that wasn't anything like that. Besides that, we protect ourselves before we leave and when we get there. <laughs>